Welcome back guys, Tactical AV here. So about a month ago, my Marantz receiver blew up the amplifier module inside of it for a specific reason. At that point it went into protection mode and would no longer power on anymore. So if you might recall from my last video, originally what happened here was I connected my Klipsch R51M bookshelf speakers that I, well, newly acquired to my Marantz onboard amplifiers as opposed to, well, the external power amplifiers I was using. And well, everything worked wonderful, but I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about speakers and, well, amplifiers. You see, not all speakers are created equal. But you've definitely got to make sure you know the resistance of the speakers you're using with the amplifier you'll be powering them. Now, normally in the past, I've never had problems driving an 8 ohm load or a loudspeaker with a resistance value of 8 ohms connected to most, well, home theater receivers. And while for those that don't know, I've talked about it before, most home theater receivers are going to be Class D digital amplifier modules built inside of it. So, plain and simply, what happened to this amplifier is the amplifier module blew inside of it. Let's talk a little bit more about what exactly occurred to my Marantz. All right, so after everything was said and done, it happened to be the right channel that needed to be replaced inside of my unit. And while there's technically no component inside of the unit called the amplifier, simply whatever was connected to the right front channel of my Marantz amp caused the right front channel's amplifier module to blow. And well, it meant bad luck for me because, well, the amplifier would no longer turn on anymore. But I definitely learned some lessons after going through this ordeal. So for those of you that don't know, my Marantz amplifier here happened to be under warranty at the time of which it broke. And while most of us know anything under warranty, well, if it breaks, you don't have to pay for it. And so I contacted Marantz and got to work. Found a local repair shop that was authorized and licensed by Marantz to do any repairs. In fact, that's one of the main reasons I'd like to mention when you buy electronics, well, you want to make sure it's from an authorized dealer. And in case something like this happens to your electronics as well, well you can easily go back to that authorized dealer and well, provide proof of purchase well, and deal with the warranty that way. And well, not long after, I dropped my receiver off at the repair shop I chose and received a phone call letting me know exactly what I had expected to hear. Exactly. You see, when the problem had occurred, there wasn't any audio actually being emitted from the speakers, and so the amplifier wasn't playing any audio at the time the amp blew. However, you've got to be careful with this. I oftentimes use Spotify to connect directly to the receiver or other amplifiers using the Wi-Fi connection. And, well, when this happened, I was going through my phone, constantly pressing connect to Spotify because the connection, well, was dropping out. Shortly thereafter, in one of the clip speakers, the right one, I heard a loud pop. And, well, from being well rehearsed with electronics, I knew exactly what had occurred and was very... Let's just say I found the situation to be unfortunate for myself. In fact, it was quite interesting that I found that the repair person that actually performed the necessary repair on my unit happened to be an employee of Marantz in the past and performed the exact type of work for the company before. But after a complete inspection and everything on the unit was gone over, well, let's just say we're back in business. So now that my main video and audio processor are now back up and running, well, what else did we learn? In fact, while my main Marantz unit was in the shop getting repaired, I was using one of the Slimline amplifiers Marantz that I had for quite a while. Been using it in my bedroom. Okay, so why really did my Marantz amplifier blow the right channel inside of it? And while that answer is really tough to give, which is why when I hooked it up again this time around, I made sure everything was done properly. And well, let's just say I won't be using the front left and right speaker terminals on this amplifier anymore. As I've always suggested using the external power amplifiers, especially for the main front left and right channels. You see, obviously I was playing my music in stereo mode from this amplifier, using it as a preamp to the power amps. When for a short period I just disconnected the external power amps and, well, used the onboard amplifiers of the Marantz. Played the audio at about 70% volume for at least half an hour with nothing but great news. 
And well, I know it didn't happen on this end since I was using my trusty AudioQuest Type 4 speaker cables that are well pre-terminated from the factory, so you don't get any shorts or jumps. And if you've ever noticed receivers that have a piece of plastic covering all of the channels, well, that's so that bare wire doesn't touch the chassis of the unit and you don't get a short. Let's just say I won't be using any bare wired connections anymore for speaker cables. And well, of course, I have to upgrade the cooling to this unit as well. Okay, I don't have to, but I'd like to. So since I'm pretty sure the problem didn't originate with the Marantz unit, well, let's talk about what exactly I think really happened. You see, some speakers aren't exactly a complete flat 8 ohms all the time. And well, depending on what type of wire you're using and what type of connections at this type of connection, well, you can definitely get electricity jumping between the two, positive and ground. That's why, well, using a pre-terminated speaker cable eliminates that possibility almost completely, except for, well, what's inside of the terminals on the other side and the crossover. And, well, not all amplifiers are designed the same. You see, not all of the amplifiers are linear in a sense of their volume and gain. So think of it like this. When you're looking at this unit and you're at 22 volume, does that mean we're using 22% of the power of the amplifier? No, not in this particular design. Okay, so say we look at an old air amplifier. When we turn the volume up to halfway, are we using half or 50% of the power of the amplifier on board? No, that's not necessarily how a lot of designs work, in fact. And of course, that isn't the way sound, or SPL, works. You see, sound pressure isn't dead when there's no sound, and you're never going to reach 0 dB with complete silence in your living room. But with an amplifier design like a lot of the surround sound receivers, let's just say there's a lot less going on inside of it at lower volumes than when you turn it up to, say, 70% volume and higher than that. At that volume, at most amplifiers, we begin to almost tap out and, well, let's just say not everything you'd expect to happen happens at this volume. Okay, so what does all this mean? Simply what it means is playing a high efficiency speaker has its definite drawbacks and, well, I saw that firsthand when I took a cheaper pair of bookshelf speakers and decided to use them on my Marantz amp up 70% volume. You see, that's going to be the main drawback with a lower-powered speaker. So lesson number one, cheap speakers, expensive amp, not a good mix. Cheap speakers, power amp, no problem. Built a lot differently. Alright, so I'm certainly not saying that I'll never use Klipsch speakers again, or that I would never hook them up directly to a surround sound receiver or anything like this again. Well, that's not exactly true either. You see, one of the main lessons here I learned for myself was, well, there's definitely a difference between the home theater equipment and the critical, dedicated two-channel music listening stereo equipment. There's a reason the stuff is built differently, and well, it's for a different purpose. You see, never mind if it's necessarily digital or analog, we're not paying attention to that here. But what I am saying, and I think most people would agree with me when I say this, is that the surround sound receivers aren't necessarily a good idea to use as a two-channel music listening stereo amplifier. And exactly for that reason. Plus, the stereo stuff just sounds better. Now, I'm definitely going to use my Marantz amplifier to play music, of course. Let's just say I won't be taking any budget bookshelf speakers and, well, connecting them directly to my Marantz anymore. If I want to play back two-channel music, well, I'll use something that's more dedicated for the task, a power amplifier instead. Not that there's anything wrong with the Class D digital amps inside a home theater receiver. You just simply don't run that much of a risk using the stereo equipment, it seems. But for now, at least, we're back to business, and, well, I can focus on things as usual. And well, the amplifier has never sound better.